like the rest. What's going on everybody? Jeff West here with Heli Direct, and today we have the Align TB60 on the table. This is the combo kit. So you get all your electronics, including a micro beast flop barless unit. You just need your battery and the build. Let's go ahead, get this build started. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Let's get started. The first step is to disassemble your head. They give you everything together as an assembly, but you must take it completely apart, Loctite, and grease everything. You will notice there is a little bit of grease, but we want to make sure it is perfect. So we're going to use some Micro Lube GL261. We are going to grease all of these thrust bearings, both of them the exact same way. Once you have this bearing greased up both sides, we are going to lay it down onto our outer bearing. Now, if you notice here, this is gonna be the blade grip bolt where my binky is, then the washer, outside bearing, inside shim. So this is going to sit with the open side towards this outside. And they say in and out on the actual races, the inside meeting towards the bearing block, head block. Do the exact same onto the other side now that we have our other bearing done we can move and assemble our right side so again it's going to be shim it'll be smaller id race and then bigger id race and then our shim so we can grab a small driver now i like to use a one and a half millimeter and i will grab my bearing stack and my bearing stack here to the right where the driver is is the blade grip bolt will be smaller id thrust bearing with the opened end facing the larger ID with the shim. Drop that whole assembly down into our blade grip, tap it down into place, and then do the exact same on your other blade grip. Grab your shim, grab your blade grip, drop that entire assembly down into this blade grip. So next we are going to assemble our feathering shaft into the head block little bit of micro lube or grease of your choice and we're going to put this coating onto our feathering shaft we're going to take our damper now notice one side is tapered and one side is flat we want the tapered side to face into the head block so we're going to push it into the head block flat side facing out grab your feathering shaft get it started grab your next damper grease on it tapered side towards the head block, tapered side towards the head inside of the head block, flat side out, grab your shim, slide that onto this side and a shim on this side. So now we can grab our blade grip and we are gonna slide it down. We want the align facing up, the hole for the nut facing down, slide it onto our feathering shaft here. Four millimeter driver. We have our feathering shaft bolt with the washer. Loctite already applied on our bolt here. We're just gonna get it started. Now that we have that started, we're gonna flip the assembly over, grab our other blade grip. Again, align logo facing up and slide this down. Once we get that slid down, you can see that sticking out there. We're gonna grab our next blade grip bolt and washer. Loctite on our threads here and get this one started as well. Make sure you clean your bolts really well with rubbing alcohol prior to assembling your head assembly or any screw. Now we need another four millimeter Allen, one on each side of our blade grip bolts here, and we are going to get these tightened all the way up. Now that we have our bolts tightened all the way up, check and make sure everything is free and smooth, no gritty, no binding. So now the head block, feathering shaft, and thrust bearings are done. Now that that is done, we're gonna come back with our arms and we're gonna slide them right onto the blade grip. There's two screws per arm, Loctite, two and a half millimeter driver, get those both screwed down on each side. So now that we have finished tightening up both of our blade grip arms, we can move on to putting the ball ends on. So you will need a one and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on your thread, and you're gonna get this put on to each side. Screw them all the way down and tighten them up. Now we got that one torqued down and tightened up. So our blade grip arms are installed and Loctited. Now we can go ahead and put our washout arms on. Our washout arms 
come pre-assembled. I took the screws out over here on the links. No need to pull the links off because we're just gonna put Loctite, put them back. And then we're just going to put a dab of Loctite on our threads here. And they are gonna go into these outside holes on the head block. Two millimeter driver, tighten them all the way up. Now for the screws that go in to hold these arms, Loctite, one and a half millimeter driver, one screw per side. Now that we got one side done, we are gonna do the exact same on the other side. So now our head is fully assembled and we are ready to set it aside and start on the swash plate. So now we need our swash plate and we need all of the ball links to go to the swash plate. It does say align TB60 on the front and we want that to face forward. So we're going to start with the back, grab our ball and anti-rotation pin, dab a Loctite, two millimeter driver, start it by hand, tighten these all the way up. All of the rest of the balls are the exact same so you're just gonna start on here and just work your way all the way around and tighten them all down. So now that our swash plate is done, everything Loctited, we can slide the main shaft through the swash plate and into the head. The side that says align TB60 goes up. Our head block is gonna go on here and you'll see that there is two holes drilled here and here. Those are for the two bolts. The bottom only has one, so very important. Take a little bit of micro lube on your finger and give the main shaft a nice little coat where our swash plate bushing is going to slide up and down. Take your swash plate, slide it down, take any excess, wipe it on top. We are now gonna take our head block. We are gonna line up our holes. Then we're gonna come back with our three millimeter screw. You will notice one side is rounded out. One side has a spot for a lock nut and it's the same on both screws. Get your screws in, get your lock nuts on, same with the bottom, slide through. Other side has a spot for the lock nut and then tighten these all the way up. Now that our screws are in and tightened down, we can take and pop the links on. One of the things I really like is that all the links are pre-done and made for you. They are left and right-handed thread. So if you pay attention to this little mark right here, going up is left down is right. So the farther distance from that little mark to the ball end is a right hand side from the shorter distance, left hand side. So these are gonna go onto the balls on the arms here. Make sure the letter A is facing out. Letter A facing out. And then we're gonna come down to the swash plate end here. And these links here are gonna pop onto the straight balls on the swash plate, just like that. Then these ends are going to pop onto this side of the swash plate, again, remembering letter A facing out, and the same exact on this side. So now our linkages are all popped on and our head assembly is done. Also remember, you want an overall distance from center hole to center hole of 48 millimeters. So these come pre-done, just make sure you adjust it to 48 millimeters. So now that our head is assembled, we are going to start assembling our main frame. You have a left and a right frame side. So just start, pick one and start with that one. We are gonna grab our left side here and we are going to start assembling. You're gonna grab these front spacers and these spacers are gonna go off of this hole and this hole. So we're gonna come through the back side here with a two and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw, our washer, we're just gonna start this one by hand. Once we are happy with that, we'll just tighten it down, holding on it and tightening. Grab your next screw, two and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on the screw, and the same thing. But this one is going to go through this hole right here. So we're gonna come in from the back side, put our screw in, grab our spacer, and screw it all the way down. If you wanna make sure it's good and tight, grab yourself a little pair of needle nose or a wrench to fit and lock it down. Do the same on this one. Grab a little pair of needle nose, wrench to fit, lock it down. So now our two frame spacers are done. Now our next thing we're gonna do is put our canopy mount in, the rear canopy mount, which are these little short guys here. And they're gonna go off of this hole in the main frame here. So you have this little group of three. This is the back of the frame. It's gonna go off of this hole. We are gonna come in from the inside, Loctite on our screw, beauty washer, slide through that hole, come back, flat side of the beauty washer to the carbon fiber frame, Loctite's already on our screw, grab your canopy post and tighten it all the way up. Same thing, pair of needle nose, wrench, anything you have, and 
tighten it down. So now our canopy post is installed. Next thing we wanna do is put our boom clamp on. Now, you do not wanna Loctite these screws yet. So put it together and leave the screws loose. And then after the boom is in and it's the belt is tension, then you wanna go back and Loctite them. Just don't Loctite them now, but Loctite them before you are done. So we're gonna go off of these two holes right here. We want this screw facing up and to the back. We're gonna slide this boom clamp on, flip it around, coming from the outside, two and a half millimeter driver, beauty washer, no Loctite yet. We're just gonna get these screws started, but we're gonna leave it loose so that way we remember that we need to go back and Loctite them after we tension our belt. So now your rear boom block is on, loose, so we can go back and Loctite. The next thing we wanna do is install our gyro plate, our fly barless mount. You'll notice the direction of this, the longer side goes to the back, the stubbier side goes to the front, and these little tabs are going to sit down right into this little black piece on the frame here. That little tab will slide into there. And then our screw, two millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw. We can Loctite this, screw that all the way in and tighten it up. And it'll sit nice and flush into those little plastic retainers. So now we're going to install the canopy support, this little rubber guy that helps protect the canopy. You're gonna have a long screw, Loctite on the screw, take this metal sleeve, the ridged side towards the head of the screw, and it's gonna go into this metal insert that's in the frame here. It's gonna go in from the outside. Make sure you have Loctite, screw it all the way down. Once that is tight, come back with your grommet, rubber spacer, and slide it right over just like that. Now that is on, and you are gonna do everything we're doing now will be done exactly the same on the other side. So now we're gonna grab our third, bearing block for the main shaft and what we want is for the open end of the bearing to face up you'll notice that there's a closed side and an open side we want the open side up and we are going to be going off of these two screws right here so we're going to take our two and a half millimeter driver lock tight on our screw we're going to slide in from the ends from the outside here and we are going to get this guy started and there's going to be two screws again lock tight on our screw we wanna come in from the outside hole right here and screw both of those all the way down and tighten them up. So now that we got both screws tightened all the way up, that is what your third bearing block should look like. Now we can move on to the tail pulleys installation. A lot of your parts will come pre-assembled just like this, but it is very important that you disassemble and add Loctite, but you can do this very simple by unscrewing there will be a little washer there. Take a dab of Loctite, put it on your threads, put it back together and do that for every part on your pulley. Now we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna take this one loose, same thing, but this one is spring tension, so we'll hold it with our finger. Take it out, dab of Loctite, and then we'll simply put it back. And these are all two and a half millimeter drivers. Tighten it down. Then we're gonna come back to this side, take it out, keeping it all together. We'll have to push the spring a little bit, collapse it, get some Loctite on those threads, hold the spring collapsed. Goes back into that first hole that we just took it out of, tighten it down. Now, when tightening this down, depending on where this little lip is here is going to depend on the amount of spring tension. So right now we don't have a lot of spring tension, so we're gonna loosen this up. We're going to slide this over just a little bit, hold some pre-pressure, tighten it down. Now we have a good amount of pressure for our tensioner. So now this is fully assembled and ready to go in the mainframe. Now when installing this in the mainframe, we're gonna be going after these two holes right here, and we want the tensioner left side to face up, the spring side to face down, and the Align logo to face the front of the helicopter. So we're gonna come through with our two millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw. We're gonna go through these two holes right here. We're going to take the tensioner, put it into place, and get our screws started. Now that we got the bottom screw started, tighten them both all the way up. Now they are both tightened up and this side of the mainframe is completely assembled. Now what we wanna do is we wanna take our ESC tray, which is just going to slot right into this plastic piece right here, just like that. 
And then we want to take our battery latch tray, which is this piece right here. We want the flat side of the latch facing up and the hook facing down. It's going to sit in right here with these two little lips. That's going to slide into place there. And then we're going to come back with our mainframe, the other mainframe side, and we are going to get it screwed on. So you are going to duplicate the canopy post and the front canopy post and the rear canopy post like we did on the other side. And then this mainframe here is going to slide down. This side will slide down into place. Make sure you get these two little tabs here positioned properly. Once these, these are slid into their little plastic holders and this tray down here is slid into its plastic holder, we can start with putting our front two screws in and then working our way back. Loctite on our screw, get it started. Loctite on our next screw. These are for the frame spacer screws with the beauty rings. Go ahead, tighten both of these down. We're gonna move back to our third bearing block screws. Two and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on the screw. Once we have those two tightened and Loctited into place, we're gonna move back to the tensioner pulley. Loctite two and a half, two millimeter driver. Tighten that one down and then do the bottom one and then put your two, two and a half millimeter screws into your boom block here. But remember no Loctite on those left yet and leave them loose. So now we are done with the upper mainframe assembly. So we're gonna set this aside and start working on the transmission assembly. Now for the transmission assembly here, you're gonna pull these three screws, this cover is gonna come off. You don't need to do anything with this shaft or the bearings are already pre-installed. So you don't even technically have to pull this cover, just pull the screws, two and a half millimeter driver, lock tight on your screw and put them back. And there is going to be three in total, tighten them all the way up. So now once you get your last one tightened down, these three screws are in and lock tighted. You will need to come back. You will see your rear elevator servo mounts are in, but they are not lock tighted. So go ahead and pull that screw out and lock tight both of them. And then of course, do the exact same for the other one. Now that we got this last one tightened down, they're two and a half millimeter drivers. This part of the assembly is completed. So now is our pulley drive system. So this tail pulley comes pre-installed. It is a left-handed thread. So just take it off and you don't even have to take it all the way off. Just make sure you tighten it all the way down. So you spin this till it stops and then you're going to come back with a 11 millimeter wrench and completely snug this down. Remember, left-handed thread, so tighten that all the way up. So now this is installed and pull your main one-way bearing out. You will notice there is a little bit of grease in there. I'm going to add my own grease. I use the SAB flywheel grease. Just put a dab inside of the one-way bearing here and you can use a little driver, one and a half millimeter toothpick, anything like that, and just get that grease shoved all the way around. Then take your bearing, your pulley system and go ahead and slide this back together. Wipe off any excess grease. So now there is two shims that come in the little bag with your pulley. The thicker of the two shims, which is the one on the right here, this thicker one is the one we wanna use here. This one we will use in a second. So we are going to use this shim. We are going to slide it onto the top of our one-way bearing and main pulley, just like that. And then this assembly is going to slide into this bearing right here, just like that. Check and make sure it spins nice and free. So now we are ready to install our main plate assembly into the main frame. So first thing you wanna do is take your tail belt, slide it through your bearing, your boom block through the pulleys, and just position the belt right about here, just so it's sitting over that third bearing block. Come back with your Motor belt, get that slid over your main pulley, and then you're going to drop this whole assembly down. Now they do give you a shim. This is the second shim that I said earlier that we may need. Only use this shim if you have play up and down. So we're going to install it without the shim and check, and if we have any play, we will add the shim. So you're just going to take this whole assembly and you are going to drop it down until this shaft goes into that third bearing right there. So now that dropped down in there nicely, Come back, two and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on your screw, and we're gonna be going off of three screws on each side. So go get all those done. One, two, and three per side. Of course, come back and finish tightening by hand.
So now that we are fully tightened down, we are going to check and spin our pulley and make sure that it is free and smooth and not extremely tight. So now the main frame and upper mother plate is done. Next thing we are going to do is install the tail servo. But before we install the tail servo, we need to install these rubber grommets. Now this is a personal choice if you wanna use rubber grommets or not. So you're just going to slide these grommets down and you're gonna have four of them. Now, once all four of your grommets are installed, we need to put the brass inserts, which are these little guys right here. Now, it's very important that you install these correctly. You want the flat side of the brass grommet to go against the mounting surface. So in this situation, the flat side is going to face the back of the actual servo casing, and you're gonna put all four of those in. Now, once you have all four of those brass inserts in, we are ready to mount the servo and the servo horn. So now for the servo horn, a line gives you these really nice aluminum horns and you want the longer ball for the tail servo. So that is gonna be a two millimeter driver. You're gonna to wanna to put Loctite on that, Loctite on your threads, and we are going to go off of the top hole or the first hole. Now we wanna have the horn or the ball facing this way on the servo horn. So the servo horn is gonna go on here, the ball is going to go in from this side. So go ahead and tighten this all the way down. Now that that is tightened down, we are ready to install the horn onto the servo itself. So now if you want to power up your servos, I've already powered them up, made sure they are centered. So now we can take our servo horn and drop it down right onto the closest to 90, which is right here. We'll have to trim it out. Come back with your servo screw, octite on your screw, and tighten it up. Now that our horn is installed, our servo is ready to go into the helicopter. So the servo is going to be installed this way. We want the splines forward horn up. Grab your tail servo mount, and you will notice that these two sides are a different length. So the side with the align to the left here is the longer 26.6 millimeter side. The side with the T70 is the 23.9 millimeter side. So while installing this, we want the 26.6 millimeter side, which is the longer side, to be on the right side of the servo. So it'll look like this. And then we are gonna come back from the back side here. Our screw ran through the carbon fiber plate. Loctite on our screw. We are going to hold this mount into position. We are gonna run our screw through and tighten them down. And you are going to do that for the other three. So once you are finished tightening all your screws down, your servo and mount is installed. Now we need to grab this flat plate here and we want the countersunk side facing up and it is going to screw onto our mount right here. So two and a half or two millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw, get both screws tightened down. Now that both of our screws are fully tightened down, we can install the mount into the helicopter. Now, if you'll notice that there is a recessed part there and that is for the arm to miss the mount, and it is very close. So now we are going to grab our mainframe, and we are going to be going after these spots right here in the frame assembly. So this is going to slide into here, just like this, and slide into that side, and then push this together so that it will lock it into place and it cannot go anywhere. Two millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw, one on each side. Flip the assembly over and put your other one in. When installing your tail servo, make sure that the spline is facing the boom, horn up and ball link to the left. That way your push rod is the correct length. Now that our tail servo is fully installed, we can move on to mounting our cyclic servos. For the cyclic servos, there are the three red servos. The tail servo is the all black servo. Two of the cyclic servos have long leads. One has a short lead. The short lead is your back elevator servo. The long leads are your front two servos. You're gonna do the exact same thing. Put your grommets in, put your metal inserts in, and get your balls ready to be Loctited onto your servo horns, just like we did for the tail servo. So we got our cyclic servos all ready to be installed. You will notice our grommets are in, our brass inserts. The inserts are facing the servo horn on the cyclic servo because these get mounted this way. So you want your servo splines to face each other. Your arms are 90 degrees. You're gonna take your front servo mount and this servo mount with the recessed holes at the bottom, 
and the raised lips are going to go this way. So the servos are going to screw in from the outside. So this would be the front of the helicopter. You're going to face the horns together, the splines. You're going to line this up, come back with your one and a half millimeter driver, carbon plate, Loctite on your screw, slide it through, tighten it down. And you're going to do that for both servos and your fronts will face each other just like this. So the front servos are completed. Everything is screwed and Loctited. So this is what you want yours to look like. Now we can move on to the rear servo. Again, the rear servo is the one with the shorter wire. Now you're gonna take your real, rear servo mount here and you will notice that one side of course is longer than the other side. This is the way the servo is going to sit with the longer side to the right of the helicopter, spline of the servo to the right and come back one and a half millimeter driver carbon fiber tray here or plate sorry and screw it all the way down and do that for the other three screws our rear servo is ready to be installed so we are going to install that first there is two mounting locations right here two and a half millimeter screws we're going to come back with a two and a half millimeter driver we're going to come back two and a half millimeter driver loctite on our screw you will notice that there's recessed areas for the head of your screw to fit and we are just going to get that screw started come back with our second screw two and a half millimeter driver and get it screwed all the way down. So now that our rear is screwed all the way down and tightened up, we're gonna install the front servos. Now you will notice that we want the servo mount to sit on the flat side like this. So coming in from the top, screws going in from the outside. Two and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on our screw. We're gonna come in from this side here and get this screw started. Come back from the other side. It's better if you have a ball tip driver to help get these screws started and tighten them down and then tighten them all the way up. Now our servos are mounted, loctited, and we are ready to move on. Next thing we want to do is install our anti-rotation bracket just like this. So we're going to come back in two and a half millimeter driver, loctite on our screws and tighten them all the way up. Now that we got our screws tightened up, our anti-rotation bracket is installed. So now we are going to install our other boom clamp. Now these do not get Loctited yet. So you're gonna go off of these two holes on each side that it's sliding holes. You're going to take your clamp, put your belt through the clamp. You want the Align logo facing up and the screws facing to the back. You're gonna slide it through here, go off of these holes right here and put your two screws in on each side with a two and a half millimeter driver. So once you get all four of your screws in, leave it loose so you can slide this forward and backwards. This is where we do our belt tensioning. And then we have to go back and lock tight four on each side. So remember that they are loose and leave them so it can slide around. So now we are going to assemble the landing gear. So we wanna grab our skids they're gonna both be the same, so it doesn't matter which one you grab first, but just know the angle. You want the angle to face forward. So we're gonna take one. This is gonna be our front now. You see this little recessed area. We wanna take our canopy clip. It's gonna sit down with the Align logo facing up. Lock nut, so no Loctite. Two millimeter driver. Run your screws down. Once you have those tightened up, we're gonna come back. Two millimeter driver, and we need our post. Now there is a lock nut on both of all three of our threads. So no Loctite again, these are plastic. You want the lock nuts to face each other. So you're gonna get two of these posts per skid. They're gonna look like this. Two millimeter driver, come in from the bottom side and get them screwed in. And you're going to do both skids the same exact way. All of your skids will look like this when they are done. Lock nuts facing each other, align logos facing up. So now one thing I do recommend is taking your one and a half millimeter driver with your set screw that's gonna go into here on each of the skids. So two per side, you're just going to grab it, put a little bit of pressure down here and get those started and do that for the other three, but don't go all the way through, just get them so they start to penetrate, back it out, and then do your other three the same exact way. So now that we got all of our set screws put in, we are just going to take our skid pipes and we are going to slide them in, but we're not gonna tighten them down yet. You will notice there's an Align logo only on one side. So there's a left and a right. So we're gonna take this guy, slide it into here, push it all the way through, take our other skid, again, angle going forward through here, push it all the way through, 
and then do the exact same on this pipe here push it all the way through so our skids are done but before we tighten them down measure them we're going to set them aside and mount our lower frame sides here our lower frame sides are going to sit just like this there is a left and a right the angle goes forward with the align logo to the back this is the left side so we're going to take a two and a half millimeter driver no loctite on these screws because they're going in the lock nuts there is four screws per side Go get those tightened up and do the same on the other frame side. So now we got both of our frame sides installed. We can install our skids. Now this is totally up to you guys. If you want to use these little rubber skid nuts, they go down and they help with slipping. I personally do not like to use them because of sliding autos on asphalt or whatever they grip, but that is a user preference. The manual will tell you to use them. So we're going to slide our mounts onto the frame here. You can see they line up. There's two screws per side, two and a half millimeter driver with no Loctite as they go into lock nuts. So you're gonna do one here, one there, and two on the other side. So now we have our skids fully tightened down, locked into place. The helicopter is sitting very level. So I am happy with that. So our last step for doing the skids now is going to be measuring them. I like to measure my skids from the back of my skid to the pipe so that way they're even on both sides, it doesn't look weird. A line logo will be facing out and it's pretty much in the middle. I am going to set mine to one inch and then tighten down these set screws with a one and a half millimeter driver. So do that on both skids and your skids will be finished. There you up. guys go. I'm gonna end part one of the Align TB60 build off of here. So this model is going together very well. It's looking good, it's fitting good, and I am very happy with it. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this series. Part two will be out right after this one. So I hope you guys like this video, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.